We are staying on top of the explosion of fentanyl in our neighborhoods, the leading cause of death for American adults. And there is new data out now this week showing just how likely one is to come across the deadly drug. The DEA issuing a new warning saying that six out of 10 fentanyl laced face fake prescription pills contained a potentially lethal dose of fentanyl. So that's 60%. The drug keeps pouring over our southern border. Since August of this year, Customs and Border Protection seizing more than 12 million fentanyl pills. And according to the Families Against Fentanyl, fentanyl, the number one killer of Americans aged 18 to 45. The CDC announcing this month that it will be softening guidelines for doctors prescribing oxycodone and other opioid painkillers, making it easier for them to prescribe to their patients. And this comes at a moment where public confidence in our health agencies is flagging. Before the pandemic, polling showing almost 70% of Americans believed what they heard from the CDC. Well, earlier this year, that number was down to only 44%. Joining me now to discuss is our White House columnist from our partners at The Hill, Niall Stanage. Niall, it's such an important topic. Thanks for being here. Good to be here, Natasha. So the CDC announcing the softer guidelines for doctors prescribing opioids. Help us understand the optics of this in a moment where fentanyl only continues to explode. I think the optics are obviously rather difficult because it goes straight to the idea that public health bodies are too cosy with the pharmaceutical industry, if not in bed with it. And that has been a persistent problem with the opioid epidemic for years and years. I mean, now there is a whole range of books and movies and TV documentaries on this very topic. Now. First of all, we do have to be fair, a lot of that coziness was the FDA rather than the CDC in the early days of the opioid epidemic. The other thing is a more difficult question, I think, Natasha, which is what do you do as a public health body if there are substances or drugs that on one hand are legitimately very effective painkillers for people suffering acute pain and are also addictive and therefore dangerous? How do you navigate that? I think that's a legitimately difficult question. Absolutely. And, and more broadly, can you talk about the timing of this as trust in our public health agencies is at a low? Yeah, well, as I say, it certainly will contribute, I think, to this idea that there's too much closeness between the uh, drug industry and those public health agencies. But I would separate out to some extent uh, the opioid epidemic from the COVID pandemic. The reasons uh, that uh, people criticize public health agencies on one are not quite the same as the other. And when it comes to COVID, uh, no public health agency is perfect. And the CDC, for example, has admitted to missteps. But there were also people in relation to the pandemic who were sowing distrust for their own purposes, whether for political gain or because they were conspiracy theorists or in some cases because they were straight up grifters. So, the, you know, I do think the two issues are rather different. Niall Stanish, always appreciate your perspective and time. Thank you for being here. Thanks. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.